Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. This is a game between Neeb and Kelizer on Blackpink the Latter Edition from WESG 2017 held in China. That stands for World Electronic Sports Gaming... Yes, Sports and Gaming... Uh, World Electronic Sports Gaming? There you go. World Electronic Sports Gaming. It is a tournament including many European and Korean players and at least one South American player. Kelizer is from Brazil. Neeb is American. And let's go ahead and introduce them in the bottom left-hand corner of Blackpink. We've got the Red Protoss player. It is Neeb. And in the top right hand, it is the Blue Terran player, Kelizer. All right. So Kelizer versus Neeb here. It is a probe scout. There's the probe scout trying to harass Trying to kill this SCV, another SCV buddy has to come off the line to deal with that, and another one shows up too. This one was scouting, possibly? Maybe scouting and came back to deal with the probe. Neeb's probes can be very annoying. Perhaps not as annoying as Showtime's, though. Showtime's probes might be the most annoying of all foreigner probes available in the world. I was going to say universe, but then I was like, I don't know, maybe there's aliens that play StarCraft and they have more annoying probes than Showtime does. Seems possible. Look at this probe go. Raw, raw. Now, SCVs will win in a straight-up fight. If you just sit there and keep fighting with a probe, the SCV will win. But the reason for that is because the probe can regenerate its shields, as this probe is, happens to be doing right now, and then come get some more licks in, whereas the SCV has to be repaired, and that costs resources, and uh, drones can regenerate too. So SCVs will win in a straight-up fight. Look at this, he's trying to block off the expansion attempt by Kelizer, but no, nah, not going to happen. Probe took too much hull damage, and the expansion is going down. Meanwhile, Neeb's been able to do whatever he wants to this point, so he's doing that. There's a Reaper on the way from Kelizer. Reaper's name is going to be Jimmy John. Jimmy John started the original franchise, Jimmy John's, and became the sole provider of food for the Terran. One bleak day, all of the Marines follow, got sick because the Sprouts had Listeria. As punishment, they threw Jimmy John into a Reaper suit and made him into the killing machine he is today. Afterwards, the Terrans switched their food provider to a young recruit whose name was Subway. Wow, that was a roller coaster. All right, Jimmy John, let's do this thing. I do like your sandwiches, even if maybe your lettuce had listeria once. I don't know if that's true. So Reaper hopping on in here. The adapt just about to pop, but that means there's nothing to defend the probes here inside the main base. Gonna shade on in there. Probes forced to fight for their lives. Adept right on top of this guy. Jimmy John's just going to die. He's got one kill. What did he kill? He killed a probe? I was not paying attention for him to have killed a probe just right there. I was too busy watching the Adept. And you know what? No. In Kelizer's hand, Jimmy John stays alive. He's just too fast. He's too fast. He's too nimble. He's too sneaky. The Adept can't move out and harass because the Reaper's still around. That's so annoying. Another Reaper does, or another <laughs> Adept does pop out here, though. Can't. Get another probe kill. No, no, can't do it. But one probe kill is not bad for you, Jimmy John. Now you're dead, but that's all right. You did, in fact, scout ye old Twilight. Yes, you did. Well, the old Twilight Council did not scout the Dark Shrine that's coming up from Neve, though. I don't imagine this is a DT play. I gotta imagine this is Archons, because, I don't know, against a Terran player especially, who happens to have compsats and happens to be really good, uh, DTs just aren't going to work. Detection is going to be available. He's going to figure out to make a Raven real, real quick. Oh, this poor Adept. This poor Adept. Cyclone DPS is insanely fast. I don't know. Adept might be able to shade out of there. Walks pretty quickly. Come on. Multiple click scroll. There it is. Oh, it does manage to shade back home. Shield batteries. Two shield batteries on the way, but they're not here yet. This push is going to do pretty well out of the Kelizer. Double Cyclone push with some SCVs. For help here too. Oh, shield battery's not there yet. Trying to get the shield batteries. And before it finishes, shield battery does go down. Focusing down the SCVs who are repairing too. One shield battery does manage to make it. Hellions here to roast up the probes that are trying to fight. What an intense battle this is right now. A lot of probes dying actually. To this Hellion splash damage. Stalker goes down to the Cyclones. One SCV does stay to repair. The shield battery is gone. This push from Kelizer is incredibly damaging. Nine probes have gone down and killed the Stalker and a couple of Adepts. Can he depower? Whoa, one of the Hellions just got killed by probes. Is that what that was? I feel like that's what that was. Oh, a DT comes in. Maybe a DT is going to be enough to save the day for Neeb. What? Oh, there's the scan. DT gets enough damage off on the Cyclone, though, to kill one of them. And the second one. Oh. Dark Templar are good, you guys. Dark Templar are real good. All right, so DT manages to save the day, but it has to reveal the fact that there's a DT here. Oh, gets in the mineral line of 
Kelizer's natural base and gets seven kills there. <gasps> the D I take it back. DTs are really good, apparently, even in high-level stuff. Oh, man, another SCV going down. What a slugfest this game has been. Missile turret denied. There's the scan tank and Marina and SCV enough to do it. So when the dust settles, we've got 13 probes down for Neeb and nine SCVs killed for the Kelizer. 37 to 33 total harvesters overall. Look, you can warp in here. What? That's how Neeb was doing it. Another DT. Did he? Oh, this is the one that came from clear across the map. He's got six kills. Okay, the missile turret's done. Can you get... Nah, not with the Marines. The Marines and the tank are bad. If it was just... Can you sneak... Oh, he's looking at him going for it. Holy crap. I don't know about this. Tank goes down, but... Okay, this guy escapes with exactly one hit point. Great job, man. So they killed the tank. A couple Marines, too. What are we looking at here? I tank. Seven Marines have died. Two Cyclones, a Reaper. Uh, for three Dark Templar and a couple Adepts, mostly. Uh, also, a couple Shield Batteries and some Pylons, so that was bad. So, 2,000 resources lost for Kelizer. And 2,300 lost for the knee. This pylon, I don't think this has been scouted by Kelizer. No, he can't see it. He has not seen it yet. This Dark Templar wants to go somewhere, but I think the vision range of this missile turret covers this ramp. Pretty sure he can't. He's trying, though. Uh, uh, takes the damage, and... Oh, okay. He's out of the range there. Oh, is he attacking his... He's attacking his own supply depot, so the splash damage will kill the Dark Templar, but that backfires as it helps the DT get in. Oh, that's amazing. DT is not sure quite what to kill at this point. I guess Marines are good. Keeping the Marine count low from a Terran player is a pretty good thing, especially if they're trying to go bio. As, uh, this one is. So Tank finishes off the DT, but more Marines have died. 12 have died so far. What a bloodfest in the first six minutes of this game. Are we only six minutes in? Crikey. So it's 53 to 46 Harvesters. Neeb's up on that. 62 to 61 Supply. Ah, that's even 62. Both players are Supply Blocked as well at 62, which is kind of funny that they're that in sync right now. In sync? In sync right now, just like the band. Just like the boy band from the 2000s, late 90s. I want to say I get my early 2000s and late 90s mixed up. In sync. I want to say in sync was a uh, was a 90s thing, but I'm going to Google it. Let's do that real quick. Everybody's favorite part is when I Google things. In sync. Boy band. Says the Google. Yes, Google it is. And they started their thing in 95. Formed in Florida. They launched in Germany first. What the what? And they were active until 2002. Okay, so they're not... I don't know. 2000 was a pretty good year for them. That was Bye Bye Bye. That was that album. Tearing Up My Heart's 97. Okay, that's fair. So late 90s into the early 2000s. Fair enough. In the meantime, DT's trying to do stuff. But now you know some history about the band in sync. Some of you probably weren't alive when they were doing their thing because I'm old because I am old and that was a while ago now. I do know some children watch. If you are a child, hello. Thanks for watching my channel. Hope you enjoy the Starcraft. I hope you enjoy learning about old bands that your parents like, like NSYNC. Anyway, third base going to go land here for Kelzer. Third by Neeb's already well established at this point. It's 67 to 56 or 66 to 57 harvesters. Neeb has that lead. Got a Raven out too, does Kelizer. He's just worried about more DT stuff, or j perhaps just going to use the interference matrix from time to time on things like Immortals and, I guess, Stalkers and things like that. All right, so Kelizer's third lands, upgrading to an Orbital Command and not going Planetary Fortress here. Is this still... Man, you could still warp in some stuff here and cause some problems. Uh, Protoss, make note of this positioning, man. This is really good on this map. I like it. Neeb's going for a fourth. What? Fourth base APM for these players. One, 288 for Neeb on average. 335 on average for the Kella God, as he is known to some of his fans. Did he just... Did he just kill his missile turret on purpose? Also, what did that Widowmine fire on? What is happening? Kellazer, go. Show me why you killed this missile turret. It must have been messing up the pathing for his SCVs. He must have not wanted two and he accidentally made two or one was in the wrong spot. Because I don't think you would accidentally kill a missile turret. It did seem to be interfering with the SCV harvesting patterns. All right. Oh, that's cool, dude. So we're pretty much even on army supply. As again, Neep has a lead on worker supply. He's been macroing like a boss like he usually does. Neep is great. He is fantastic. Probably 
me think. Uh, no, he's the best. He's the best American player, for sure. I was actually making this argument with Somicron Wade on the Falcon Paladin Hour. Link in the description to the podcast the other day. I just wish there were better American representation for StarCraft. Because it was made here. Look, man. It was built in California. Blizzard is an American company, and yet the best players on Earth, all Koreans, and arguably Europe. European countries have way more better players than the United States does. It boggles my mind. How are we not better at this, you guys? Why do we care more about Counter-Strike and stuff? I guess maybe we like guns better as Americans. And this isn't a first-person shooter game. Obviously, it's RTS. And maybe that's just it. Maybe our sensibilities are more attuned towards Call of Duty and Battlefield than to a real-time strategy game such as this one. But I don't know. Out of 300 million residents and all the gamers that we have, we could really just have one player that we're super proud of. I mean, look, I like M. Canning. I like Jon Snow. Who am I forgetting that's an American player here? Uh, Jon Snow. Somebody was up and coming that I'm forgetting. But anyway, it's Neeb. It kind of begins and ends with Neeb. Ah, Kellizer figures out where those DTs kept coming from. Finds that pylon and kills it. War Prism for Neeb trying to sneak on in. Missile Turret 1 is up. Missile Turret 2 is not up yet. So the War Prism is going to get down with the... Oh, Zealots. Popping on out. Took a lot of damage, though, did that War Prism. You're going to warp stuff in? You're just going to let these guys do their thing? Yep. An attack here while the attack comes at the front. Widowmine's firing. Archon's at the front. Guardian Shield is up. Immortal's trying to fire from the backside, too. Dorito Missile actually hitting most of his own stuff. How did, oh, I guess firing on a Zealot, and the splash damage was a problem there. More Zealots trying to come on in. Raven gets picked off from the sky. Archon in the front doing terrible terrible damage. Zealots absolutely continuing to do stuff inside the main base. Seven SCVs go down. A small attack group does manage to go back and defend, but a lot of damage was already done. It's 74 to 55 Harvesters. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Neeb is so up right now. He's got his fourth base running. The attack went extremely well for him. Zealots getting into this mineral line for Kelzer too. Actually finishing off a ghost. Yep, finishing off a ghost with that damage from charge. Is that it? Oh, tank fire. I thought it was an EMP. That's tank fire. Are there more zealots up here? More zealots warping. And this war prism has more than paid for itself. Inability to just kill stuff here in the main base of Kelazur. War prism shields are up, which is why I could take that damage from that missile turret. But no, the marines finish it off. And that's it for that aggression. But guess what? Neeb's going for a fifth base. It is 129 to 108 supply, though. Kelazur has a lead, and he's down in worker lead. So that means the army supply's got to be... 1,300 for Neeb and a full 4,500 for Kelezer. Kelezer's army is huge right now. Neeb has done the economic damage. He's gotten the economic lead, but this army is really threatening right now for Kelezer. Neeb's not making any units. He's making four uh, four Dark Archons, four Dark Templar. Blah, 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 blah. Get my Brood War and my Starcraft mixed up, you guys, all the times. I do. It's sad. Working on it, trying to be better. So look at this army. I don't. There's a handful of stalkers. There's a couple archons and a couple immortals. I mean, this is actually pretty good for Neeb. EMP is getting tossed down with the ghost though. Nice concave out of the Kelizer observer, trying to hang on out and see if there's any cloaked ghosts possibly that need to be killed. But no, doesn't seem to be the case. Widowmine gets destroyed there. Oh, another Widowmine fires and does finish off a stalker. Ghost does go down. But Marine Marauder against a Moral Stalker here. Pretty strong and reinforcing units coming in from Kelazer too. Wow. Forced to warp in more Zealots to deal with this is the Neeb. Stalker's getting target fired. Zealots trying to absorb the damage being taken at the front. What an absolute bloodbath this is right now. And the attack on this particular third base of the Neeb, is it going to be enough? Is he going to be able to take this thing down is the question of the day. And, boy, probes are dying here. Oh, this is the fourth base, rather. Fourth base is in trouble. What a... Jeez. I don't even know who's going to win this thing. Probes are forced to fight, which is never good. These Marines and Marauders do not want to die. They have plus two, plus two, compared to the plus two, plus two of the Protoss army. It just scales a little bit better with the bio here. Another Widowmine shot! Takes down a Zealot, does some damage to an Archon here. 13 probes have gone down just in defense of their own base. Kelizer's aggression is just out of this world right now. Archons can't handle it. Liberator's in the mix. Trying to get more Archons, trying to get more Templar, but they don't have Storm. All they can do is Archons. Feedback on some of the Medivacs. Stalker's trying to finish off the Medivacs too, taking that damage from the feedback, wounding them. And a very... Weakened army from Kelizer finishes off an assimilator. 
And the Archons just don't have the range to handle this at all. They aren't affected by Marauder Slow because they are massive units. But still, it's not good for them to be attacked at such distance. The fourth base does go down to, again, very low on HP units here from Kelezer. But check this out. Liberators set up. Marines, Marauders, Medivex might not be here, but Kelezer doesn't care. He's still fighting. These Widow Mines are going to be a problem. The detection is just not here for me. Widow Mine shots! I mean, they get cleared out because once they fire, they lose their cloak. Obviously. Liberator setting up on the high ground here. The base, uh, the uh, fifth base of Neve does get scanned. Meanwhile, expanding behind this is Kelezer because he's good. He's good at this game. Kelezer's taking a commanding lead. 156 to 123 total supply. Worker count is effectively neutral. 60 to 63, but mules, mules are good. Kelezer's income is going to be better here, and his army is just a little bit cheaper than what Neba's trying to do. Liberator sets up at the fifth base. Stalker's coming in. Try to dealing with it. Try to deal with it. Losing a Stalker in the process, but not much more, which is not too bad. Kiting again and again and again. Force Fields trying to hold on here. Archons and Immortals trying to do their best. They just don't have the range to reach right now without the Zealots to absorb the damage. You can't stand in and fight. As we can see, Zealots getting cleared out very, very quickly. Widowmine doesn't even have to fire to make that thing happen. What an absolutely intense game this has been thus far. There is a Dark Templar in the mix. Archon absorbs that Widowmine shot very nicely. APM creeping above 400 for Kelezer. Over 300 for Neeb at this stage of the game. Kelezer's army does not look healthy. The medevacs are trying to heal, but okay, some new medevacs come in with a lot of energy available. We should see these marauders start to get healthier. We should see the marines start to get healthier. A DT is going to wander in and got a shot off. Dodge the EMP. Nicely done. Gets in, pokes, EMP, dodge. Very nice dodge for sure. All right. All right, so Neeb setting up to come in from the right side. Liberators, Liberator in the sky. Doesn't have very many HP, but doesn't really matter. I don't know. These guys are so dang scary with their plus three attack. Plus three armor's on the way, but it's not quite done yet. And look at Kelezer Stutter stepping forward right now. Immortals falling, Stalkers falling. Archons dead, and that's a good game from Neeb. Neeb's defeated. Kelezer was victorious. And Terran is your winner in this match from WESG 2017. Woo! What a battle between these two players. Yeah, left for Neeb was four Zealots, a Dark Templar, and two Stalkers. Not great. Not great numbers. And Kelleser's army wasn't huge either. I mean, 12 Marauders, 11 Marines, and a Ghost, but with good Medivac support and a Liberator with some Widow Mines too. It was enough. That's all it is. That's all it has to be is enough. You don't have to steamroll your opponent to win. Just have enough. Resources lost in this game, a full 30,000 for Neeb compared to 17,000 for Kelezer. The cost efficiency through the roof, 17 Archons and 9 Immortals died with 30 Stalkers. Kelezer lost, yeah, 121 Marines and 28 Marauders and 2 tanks, but all this stuff is cheaper. It's just cheaper. 3 Ghosts that threw down some good EMPs, I thought that was good for them, but weren't exactly, I don't think, the difference in this match. It was just Kelezer's aggression. He never gave up. He never gave the aggression up when he had it. That's all there was to it. So, hoorah! That is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another StarCraft II Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.